Well, America, we need to get right to it. And this is the benefit of talk radio in the long-form format. We're going to do something a little different this evening. I always do, but this is especially so. The question I am posing to you, the American people, is whether the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, is a traitor to the United States. Not just a misguided ideologue, not just an Obama slug, but look all over the world. Look at Afghanistan, look at Russia and Ukraine, look at China, poised to attack Taiwan. He's a special pleader for terrorists in the Middle East, the Islamo-Nazi regime in Tehran, the Islamo-Nazi regime in Gaza, the Islamo-Nazi regime in the Palestinian territories. He's in the Middle East right now, spending all of his effort, character assassinating the government of Israel, and today he said something that is even beyond the pale, that the Jews were dehumanized on October 7th. And they shouldn't dehumanize the Palestinians. Anthony Blinken has thwarted a deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel. A peace deal. That would have occurred within a month of Donald Trump's re-election. And now Saudi Arabia is saying no peace unless there's a two-state solution. The Israeli people don't want a two-state solution because they know it's their final solution. And it's remarkable, given the fact that Antony Blinken is responsible for the hiring of an Iranian spy ring in the United States, led by one of his childhood friends, Robert Malley, who had his classification pulled, and the administration refuses, refuses to tell Congress exactly what happened. Now, in the Senate, of course, the Democrats don't care. They're the Praetorian Guard for traitors, for spies, for illegal immigrants, and everything else. The Republicans in the House are having a hell of a time getting any information. And Iran is on the precipice of a nuclear weapon. And I will get to that because a well-respected organization has just announced and put out a report that Iran's potential achievement, finally, of a nuclear weapon is at the quote-unquote extreme danger phase. And Blinken is in the Middle East attacking the only country, the only one that has stood up to Iran and tried to stop them. Certainly Biden has not. So the question on the table that I want you to think about, is Antony Blinken a traitor? Is he the new Alger Hiss? Is that what's going on in our country? In my view, it sure as hell seems so. So we're going to take this step-by-step, America, because... This involves our security, this involves our allies, this involves the lives of Americans, and potentially American soldiers, three of whom have already died. Now we're going to start tonight with a speech that John McCain gave on the floor of the Senate when Blinken was nominated for Deputy Secretary of State in the Obama administration. We've broken it into three parts. We'll do the best we can to keep it flowing. Got one go. And President, I rise to discuss in a, my opposition to the pending uh, vote concerning Mr. Anthony Tony Blinken, who is not only unqualified, but in fact, in my view, uh, one of the worst uh, selections that of a very bad lot that this president has chosen. I hope that many of my colleagues will understand that not often do I come to the floor to oppose a nomination of the President of the United States because I believe that elections have consequences. In this case, this individual has actually been dangerous to America and to the young men and women who are fighting and serving it. The, uh, Mr. Blinken has been a foreign policy advisor to Vice President Biden since it stays in the Senate. But as Robert Gates has noted, Mr. Biden has been, quote, wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. At the Special Operations Fund annual meeting on May 6, 2013, Mr. Blinken discussed 
a number of the administration's achievements, achievements, including one, ending the war in Iraq responsibly, two, setting a clear strategy and date for the withdrawal from Afghanistan, three, decimating al-Qaeda's senior leadership, and four, repairing our alliances and restoring America's standing in the world. That is as Orwellian as any statement I have ever heard. Each and every issue, the conditions are a far cry from the so-called achievements that Mr. Blinken describes. In his capacity as an assistant to the President and Deputy National Security Advisor, Mr. Blinken has been a functionary and an agent of a U.S. foreign policy that has made the world much less safe today. Let's just review a couple of some of the elements in particular in Mr. Blinken's role in conceptualizing and furthering it. U.S. foreign policy is in a shambles. It's at best a strategic and at worst anti-strategic. It lacks any concept of how to obtain our foreign policy goals. This has led to countless foreign policy failures, including the continued slaughter of the Syrian people by President Bashar al-Assad, the Russian reset that culminated in President Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the betrayal of our key allies, especially in Central Europe, not to mention Israel, failing to achieve a status of force agreement that would help to maintain Iraq's security and stability, following similarly unwise, unwise strategies in Afghanistan. We will see the same movie in Afghanistan that we saw in Iraq if we have a date-driven withdrawal rather than a status-driven, conditions-driven situation, and our feckless position in negotiations with Iran on nuclear weapons that has failed to produce any progress towards an agreement. I could go into many other failures, such as the vaunted Geneva Convention of 40 Nations that was supposed to help the, or arrange for the transition from power from Bashar Assad, the failure object failure of the Israeli-Palestinian peace talks and what will be either an imminent failure of Iranian nuclear weapons agreement or an agreement that will be disastrous in the long run. There are two common sayings by the administration officials, not me, that have defined the president's approach to foreign policy, leading from behind and, quote, don't do stupid stuff. These approaches have resulted in a failed foreign policy that has made America and Americans less safe. Even President Obama's most strident supporters have begun to question the president's foreign policy decisions. In an article titled, Damage to Obama's Foreign Policy Has Been Largely Self-Inflicted, the Washington Post's David Ignatius, a key supporter of the administration's foreign policy goals, wrote that, quote, at key turning points in Egypt and Libya during the Arab Spring in Syria, in Ukraine, and yes, in Benghazi, the administration was driven by messaging priorities rather than sound interest-based based policy. So let, what, is, what has Mr. Blinken had to say about all of these issues, my friends? Let me give you a few. On Iraq, at the Center for American Progress on March 16, 2012. Now, I'm not making this one up. Mr. Blinken said, quote, what's beyond debate is that Iraq today is less violent, more democratic, and more prosperous, and the United States more deeply engaged there that at, than at any time in recent history. Less violent, more democratic, and more prosperous. At a White House briefing on March 16, 2012, Mr. Blinken said, and I'm, all these are quotes, President Obama and Vice President Biden come to office with this commitment to end the war, Iraq war responsibly. Both parts of that sentence are critical, in the war, in the war responsibly. Under the leadership of President Obama and Vice President Biden, who the president asked to oversee our Iraq policy, has made eight trips to Iraq since being elected, we followed that path to the letter. And he went on to say, quote, at every step along the way, many predicted that the violence would return and Iraq would slide backward toward sectarian war. Get this, he said, those predictions proved wrong. 
Over the past three years, violent, he went on to say, over the past three years, violence has declined and remains at historic lows, even after we completed the drawdown of U.S. forces late last year. Remember, he said this in 2012. Weekly security incidents fell from an average of 1,600 in 2007, 2008 to fewer than 100 today. Then he went on to say, and in December, after more than eight wrenching years, President Obama kept his promise to end the war responsibly. And while Iran and Iraq will inevitably be more entwined than we and many of its neighbors would like, he went on to say, one thing we learned over more than eight years in Iraq is that the vast majority of its leaders, including the prime minister, who at that time was Prime Minister Maliki, are first and foremost Iraqi nationalists and resistance to outside influence from anywhere, starting with Iran. Everybody knows the Iranians are probably the most influential nation in Iraq, certainly under Maliki. In foreign policy on December 27, 2013, he said, if we still had troops in Iraq today, the numbers would have been very small. They would not have been engaged in combat. That would not have been their mission. So the idea that they could or would have done something about the violence that's going on now in Iraq seems to me detached from the reality of what the mission would have been had they stayed in any small number. This is very, very important to follow this. How much time do I have left in this segment, Mr. Producer? So we're going to take a break now, and we'll try and pick up after. It'll be a little bit staccato, just because of the nature of the commercial breaks. But I need you to listen to the whole thing. Because I'm telling you a story about a man who I consider a traitor. An incompetent ideologue that is dragging our country into war and destroying our allies. That is arming up our enemies, effectively arming up our enemies with tens of billions of dollars and doing absolutely nothing to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, which they will have. The only country that has done anything to try and prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon in the last three years is Israel. And he's trying to destroy Israel. He's character assassinating Israel when he goes to the Middle East. He's trying to get these so-called moderate Arab states to break their alliances with Israel, to make demands of Israel. He's met with Abbas, who's a Holocaust-denying, terrorist, telling Abbas that he wants to turn over 30% of Israel to him. This is a disaster. He's not only a traitor. I suggest that he might even be the Aldra Hiss of modern era. We really don't know because the Senate won't hold any hearings. The House has held very few hearings on this man. And the Democrats are defending him. The media are defending him. The Washington Post has a special pleader for him. Thomas Friedman. But I don't care. 